welcome back to the Scarborough Board of Education meeting. Today, again, is March 6, 2014, and we have just um, adjourned from executive session. Uh, we discussed the board negotiations and the Scarborough Education Association contract, and now we'll continue on with our agenda, and that would be 5.0. Are there any adjustments to the agenda this evening, Dr. Uh, just one. Um, there's an addendum to the uh, agenda, and that's under 10.9 appointments. Uh, you have a 10.9.1, Scarborough High School. There's also a 10.9.2, which is an appointment, athletic appointment at the um, middle school. And you should have received that, I guess. Yes. All right. No other adjustments? Yes. Okay. Then I will uh, continue on with 6.0. We have the superintendent's report this evening. Yeah, just a quick report, um, quick update. Obviously, uh, we're getting into budget season. It's um, always an exciting time, a challenging time. Um, the focus of the work for the Leadership Council and for the uh, Central Office Leadership Team um, is budget development in preparation for what will be the rollout of the Leadership Council's uh, first budget uh, proposal uh, presented to the school board at the upcoming workshop, and that will be on March 20th. Um, I continue. Uh, a pretty rigorous schedule. Uh, Kelly keeps me very busy uh, visiting across the entire district. Um, and as you know, I'm uh, visiting with all uh, brand new, all uh, second year and all third year uh, teachers and professionals in the district. And I do have to share with you that um, it's, it's, I'm very, very impressed, not only uh, work with the work that I see in the classroom um, or in the therapy room uh, that I observe, but also in terms of the level of support uh, that our new staff uh, report to me to be receiving uh, by their school leaders and by their colleagues. So it's a very, it's always a, a great part of my daily schedule when I'm out on one of those visits. And then lastly, uh, just uh, so that you know, we have our organizational breakfast meeting tomorrow of the brand new Scarborough Schools um, uh, Council of Business and School Partners. They'll be meeting uh, tomorrow morning, and um, I will give you some more on that, provide updates as we come together. But we're really pleased. I think we have about 20 uh, folks that are attending our organizational meeting. So thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we have 7.0. We have the shares report this evening. And I will start off by saying that I had the privilege this week of reading to the second graders in Mrs. Allen's class at Eight Corners yesterday. Both of my girls went to Eight Corners, so it was quite nice to see Mrs. Harris back there. And I read The Little Polar Bear, Lars, and um, actually one of my neighbors was in the class, and he saw me and he looked at me kind of strangely, and then today he saw me out on the street and he said, it was really neat that you came to the library to read to well, thank you. I enjoyed being there. So it was very nice, and I know some of you also had been over to the different schools and reading because of Read Across America and Dr. Seuss's birthday, and it was a great, uh, great time. Miss so Perry and I crossed paths today as readers down at Blue Point. I did the mud and the rud. Oh, very good. <laughs> That's Mrs. Douglas's favorite story for me to read to her class: is the mud and the rud. <laughs> Oh, um, gosh, I read um, Cooper Humperdinck. That's what I read today, too. <laughs> but, I, but I also read um, Eddie, something about Eddie and Davy had a fight, I think. Oh, yes, I saw that, that one. one. That was a yeah. stack that Mrs. Delolio had pulled out. <laughs> I read um, Duck for President and the Lorax. And I read <laughs> if, I ran a, if I Ran a Zoo by Dr. Zoo. Oh, <laughs> Maybe it's some, somehow reflective of our, our yes. personality. <laughs> well, I was at, I was at uh, Eight Corners on Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, and I will go to Pleasant Hill tomorrow. I told Mr. Thurlow I wanted a shot at each of the schools. So. All right. Well, thank you very much for doing that. I'm sure he was appreciative to fill oh, in. Oh, I have more fun than the children do. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the Wentworth School um, work is focused currently on areas A and D primarily, which are arts, music, the cafeteria, kitchen, gym, and the main office. 
The second floor is at the punch list stage with over 90% of it complete. So it, it, it's March, and, and that's good. So um, that's going well. 95% of all the flooring is complete on the second floor as well. All of the doors have been hung, and they are locked. Uh, gym equipment's being installed. Geothermal pumping is ongoing into the boiler room. They're installing heat pumps. That's going well. Commissioning is ongoing. We've had several minimal, minor issues, um, but for a project that size, it's not so bad. Uh, the focus is now on planning for the spring and summer with the demolition schedule and site work completion. Also mentioning March 20th, we have our boardsmanship workshop. Um, I believe we were going between 4 or 4.30 for a start, so we'll, as soon as we have that time firm down, we'll let you know. Um, March 24th, the day at the State House, I read somewhere recently it was starting at 11. Uh, I'll verify that. I haven't seen another bulletin come back up again. I'll, I'll, I have a meeting next week. Next Saturday, okay. but I was going to—I'll send a, an email up there. I've asked them uh, for the schedules so that I can give it to the students uh, in case they want to meet up with our representatives on that day. Right. Okay. Um, so we have that, and then also mentioning the April third right, meeting, Thursday, April third meeting. Our Thursday, April third meeting, um, everyone agreed that we would be willing to hold our normally scheduled school board meeting earlier that evening at five. No, five, 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 five to six thirty. Um, in order <coughs> that we may be able to attend, if we so desire, the Scarborough Education Foundation Swirl and SIP event, fundraiser. landing at Pine Point fundraiser. So that's going to be held from 7 to 9 p.m. down at the landing. So if anybody's interested in tickets, please contact a Scarborough Education Foundation member. It's a great fundraiser, and that helps our teachers be able to apply for grants uh, for things that they'd like to do in their classroom that isn't covered by our normal budget. So that being said, that's it. Um, I have a student's representative report this evening from Princeton. Yes. Um, so March is National Youth Arts. Art Month, and so at the Portland Museum of Art, um, they are holding an exhibition of artwork created by Maine students, which will be on exhibit from March 8th through April 6th, and um, everybody is welcome to attend. The um, exhibition celebration is on March 8th from 4 to 7.30. Um, and also at Wentworth School, Ms. Hewitt and Ms. Mayo have um, created an opportunity to know what the temperature is on the microclimate of the Wentworth playground because of the number of indoor recesses they have had to have because of the <laughs> cold weather. Um, and so they asked for funding um, to buy a digital weather station and would like to thank all who donated to that cause. Um, there's also an upcoming eighth grade parents' night at the high school on Monday. And uh, that parent-teacher conferences uh, have been going on at the high school and will begin throughout the middle school as well. Okay. Thank you very much. And I believe our 9.0 recognition. I have uh, just one item, and Ms. Perry actually can probably speak to this better, but um, we I think she might have mentioned Operation uh, Cupid, which was a, a big um, a big success, and I thought I might just give a little bit of history because it's, um, it's, it's an important lesson about stick-to-itness. Um, Operation Cupid was actually started in 2005 as a community service project for one middle school class. So it's interesting how things start and, uh, and gain uh, a whole life. Uh, the first mailings were actually care packages and cell phone calling cards um, being sent to troops in Iraq. Um, and at that time, some of the Scarborough parents were serving there in Iraq. Uh, Tom Griffin was the middle school, one of our teachers, a middle school staff coordinator. And Mary Nablo was the parent volunteer in 2005. And they're both still very active with the project. Um, the target date for the project has always been Valentine's Day. Therefore, that's how it got its name, Operation Cupid. The uh, project has grown to include students at all levels, including middle school builders club, high school key club, Wentworth K kids, and many K-12 students. Uh, community volunteers also participate extensively, especially members of the Kiwanis Club. The project continues to send 
packages and cards to troops overseas and has expanded to include veterans at the Scarborough Veterans Home, the Libby Mitchell Post of the American Legion, and the veterans residing in the um, Arthur B. Hewitt um, housing in, in Saco. Uh, this year, close to 2,000 Valentine's Day cards were created and mailed, um, also through donations, a $200 gift certificate from both Hannaford and Lowe's were donated um, to support the residents at the Hewitt House. Current members include, um, as I said, Mr. Griffin, still very much involved um, with the project. He's the advisor of the Builders Club at the middle school. Mary Nablo also re remains active as a parent volunteer. Others, uh, key, key club member, high school junior, uh, Julia Martins. Um, uh, Builders Club member, seventh grade, Sarah Stoffer, and eighth grader, Samantha Carrero. Uh, K Kids Advisor, Wentworth Guidance Counselor Mary Griffin, Primary Staff Liaison, Blue Point, um, uh, Second Grade Teacher, um, uh, Miriam uh, Collins, and uh, the principal there at Blue Point, John Thurlow. That is a K K2 effort, um, and they are the uh, liaisons from K2. And Kiwanis Club members, Jim uh, Demesis, Demesis. Demesis, and our own Miss Perry. All right, so we have new business this evening, 10.1 minutes from February 6, 2013, oh, 2014. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, we've got a Okay. And everybody have those? Yep. The will of the board this evening with the minutes? Uh, move approval is printed. Second. Any changes, corrections? Uh, Kelly's going to change my absence to tardy. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I had made a note of that. She needed a I note, though. I, I, she got an excuse note. I, I did read down below that you did attend. I yes. knew that. Yes. So. I want credit up top. Now. Oh, sorry. So, tardy <laughs> as opposed to absence. All right. So, no. For it, legitimate reasons. So the, change, oh, so, the change will absolutely be made. Any other changes or corrections? Being none, all in favor of approval of the minutes with the one correction? <coughs> two six two corrections. Thank you. Uh, then we have 10.2, motion to approve the September 1, 2013 to August 31st, 2016 bargaining contract of the Federal Education Association. The will of the board this evening. I move approval. Second. I have a second from Jane. Thank you. All right. Any, would you like to give your overview? I would. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, uh, I'm Jackie Perry, and I chair the negotiations team for the Board of Education. And on that behalf, I thank, want to thank both teams for negotiating in good faith and for our open and honest discussions throughout. This is a three year contract, retroactive to September 1st. 2013 and concluding August 31st, 2016. Some of the difficulty in negotiations was about new and pending legislation, especially concerning teacher evaluations and reduction in force. Reduction in force is when we have to lay off teachers. And working on the criteria for that was uh, a bit stressful, but we got it done. Salaries and benefits are always issues because we have limited resources. For the fourth year, we have held extracurricular salaries to the previous base. Our teachers have agreed that they will, starting with the 2014-15 school year, work with us to lower our cost of health insurance by agreeing to the following. If two spouses work in our school district, at the present time, they are either members of a family plan, if they have children, or they are considered two adults. And starting with the new contract next September, uh, if they have no children, they will each be considered one adult, and believe it or not, two singles are less expensive than two adults. If a spouse of a teacher 
has a position for which they are eligible for full-time benefits, and then the teachers have agreed that that spouse will in fact take the other company's insurance. So we have agreed that the, the teacher would probably keep the children, if they have children, on our plan here, but that uh, the spouse has, ag they have agreed that the spouse would take the other insurance. The other savings that comes to us with this is, at the present time, if, if two teachers, two people employed by the district take the family plan or the two adult plan, the one who isn't on the insurance gets a tax sheltered annuity payment of $800 that they will no longer be eligible for that. However, if we have an employee who is on a plan not in Scarborough, in other words, their spouse works at another company and they go on that plan, then they will be eligible for that TSA. We don't know what the savings of that agreement will be, and we won't know quite frankly, until September, October, when we know, number one, the rates, and number two, how many of our employees are moving off of our health care plan. We have also, uh, they have also agreed uh, to uh, look at a new offering from uh, Anthem uh, that allows for uh, lower payments but a larger deductible and if you're a younger person, it wouldn't be good for me, but if you're a person starting out and you have no uh, apparent injuries or illnesses, you, you could save yourself some money, but it's their option. And we will, that will be explained fully to them uh, by representatives from our finance, our finance department. So we're very pleased that, that our staff uh, is willing to work with us to try and lower the cost of health uh, in our school district because that is an enormous amount of money. Together we have clarified language around planning time for teachers. And as far as their salary is concerned, the staff has agreed to a 1.5% on the base for the current year it will increase to 2% on the base for the second year of the contract, and in the third year of the contract, it will be 2.5%. And I was asked when I was explaining to the board, how, where does that put us right now uh, as far as other school districts are concerned? I think we've lost ground. It, it is amazing to me who, who I've been doing this for a number of years, and our representative uh, spokesperson, Ann Chapman from Drummond Woodsum, that school districts have been giving uh, not only larger salary increases than we ever anticipated, but increasing their contribution to the health insurance. Uh, for example, uh, communities around us, surrounding us, are offering to pay 87 to 95 percent of the health insurance benefit, which blows our mind. But anyway, uh, we will know uh, once this has been ratified and we can take a look at what other communities are actually paying, how we will fit. Uh, we are very, very happy with our staff. We have a great staff. We had a great negotiations. There was no animosity. They were willing to work with us every step of the way to try and save as much money as possible to be put into the classroom. And that was our goal, and that was their goal, and I think we achieved it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any comments from anyone else on the board? If there aren't any other comments, I will make one comment uh, that I was asked to read. Donna Bealey is not here with us this evening, and she just asked that I please say that she was very pleased with the proposal being made by the negotiations team. We are very fortunate to employ some very dedicated staff with a high commitment to the children of Scarborough. 
and she would like to thank those who negotiated the contract and feel confident that when we work collaboratively and we support our staff, we are also supporting our students. So she just asked that I read that, and she said thank you, and I too will say thank you. So all in favor then of approving the contract as presented? Thank you very much. The contract is approved. I will sign it and then give it to Joanne, and she will have David and Justin, oh, Mr. O'Connor and Mr. Stebbins sign that. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. This is a motion for the board to approve donation of school furniture from the Wentworth School to Partners for World Health. Um, this is a, an organization that um, uses basically discarded um, or not usable furnishings uh, for uh, starting up third world schools, which is a, some pretty nice work. Uh, some of the furnishings that we're talking about here are 20 plus years old, have a low residual value, um, and or have reached the ends of their useful lives. Um, we, uh, as uh, Mr. Jepson says in his recommendation uh, to me, we will repurpose any and all furnishings from Wentworth Intermediate School that have any value or longevity left in them um, and use them in our other schools, but it is his recommendation, and I concur, that any of the other furnishings that are no longer of use to the school department be donated to Partners for World Health to help in their efforts to provide some materials to help furnish schools and medical facilities in disadvantaged countries. If you have this as part of your packet, I um, recommend that the board move approval on this um, motion. Jackie. Move approval. Second. Um, I have one thing to say. They are located in Scarborough. So uh, Partners for World Health is right. located in Scarborough, Scarborough off non of uh, nonprofit. Um, I, I think it's also important to note in Mr. Jepson's uh, recommendation that um, it was looked at of potentially doing a community sale or having people come and, and uh, purchase the, the, the items or the pieces. To do that, um, I think he said it would probably cost us more in terms of resources and having to manage and facilitate something like that, so I think it was it was looked at. Um, but I think uh, another benefit of this is they are willing to come into the facility, take all of the equipment out, pack it up on their own, and, and take it off. So that will actually save us money in the long run with the transition as well. Jackie? And uh, as a Kwani and I have uh, donated time with this organization, Kiwanis members have, and it is absolutely incredible what these folks have been doing. I mean, it, I could tell you stories, but I'm not going to take up all of that time. But I could tell you also that this is not the first time that Scarborough has done this. And uh, I think it is just absolutely incredible that we are able to do it. I think our children should know, our students should know that these items aren't going into the junk heap, that, that they may have outlived their usefulness for our children, and our children are extremely fortunate that the citizens of this town are, have put up the money so they can move into a brand new school with new furniture, but that what they're using now that is usable will continue to be used by students in other nations, other countries. Any other comments? Seeing none, all in favor of approving the uh, donation of the furniture of the Wentworth Building to the World Partners for World Health Organization. We have six plus one. So move. Next, 10.4. <coughs> um, this is a, a, do a donation that's coming the other way um, from a Greg. Trugowski. Okay. Yeah. Strigowski. Um, someone who has played sports uh, and who is uh, a, an avid sports sports fan, uh, basically wanting to make a donation of one thousand uh, dollars to the Scarborough Middle School athletic department, and um, we would thankfully um, be very thankful to uh, him. And I recommend that you approve that motion. Move to approval. Second. Okay. Yes, Chris. Uh, I think it's also 
warrants a, a shout out to the assistant AD, Mr. Hartle, um, who was specifically called out in the request for the donation for an outstanding job. Not that he's he's one among many, and I know it takes more than one, but um, certainly this, his efforts were recognized by this individual, and that played a, uh, a somewhat important part in him making this contribution. So thank you to Mr. Hartle. Aren't we lucky to have some of the leaders that we have in our school district? Yes. We're blessed. Absolutely. So, any other comments? Seeing none, all in favor of approving as presented. Six plus one. And we thank you to Mr. Stragowski for his kind donation and his kind words uh, on Mr. Hart. Uh, this is um, a motion for the board to approve uh, my recommendation for a waiver for s facility charges. I think this is something that you're, some of you are familiar with, uh, Mix and Mingle Square Dance Club. Um, and um, Mr. Grimmett is um, in the audience. We see him, uh, I know I've seen him once a year uh, <laughs> around this time. And um, basically, this is uh, this waiver request is included in your packet, and um, this seems like a nice group and a, a terrific uh, a pastime, a nonprofit group uh, who's been using the school for more than 20 years now for Saturday night dances, and we would like them to continue to dance. Move approval. And, and they started out in the basement of the Bessie School, <laughs> in the old gym at Bessie School. Second. Second. Okay. Any questions, comments? All in favor of recruiting? Six plus one. As Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. And we hope more members will join the square dancing group. Kelly, we, we've given the shout out before, so. Um, next, we have 10.6. I will turn that over to Kelly Murphy. So this is the second reading of the um, policy KF, which is the use of school facilities. And there have not been changes since our last reading, since our last meeting. So. The will of the board this evening. Yes. Do you want me to move approval and ask my question? Move approval. Move approval. Do second. I have a second? Second. A second. Now you may ask your question. Thank you. Thank you. Kelly, how would you categorize this policy compared to the one it replaces? It clarifies some things. It makes it um, easier for groups, I feel, to uh, figure out which priority group they fall into. And it shortens the amount of time um, if there's been a cancellation in some of the athletic facilities, it shortens the turnaround time to re-rent the space. So if the ski team has the plumber gym reserved and um, it's nice weather so they can go and ski at the mountain instead of using the gym for dry land training and they go, that gym's available and they know it far enough in advance then um, a travel basketball team or whomever is requesting the facility could get in there and use the space. And it had been a two-week turnaround for that um, type of cancellation, which is cumbersome <laughs> to the teams that need the gym space. As we know, we're really short on gym space in this town. So um, I think it makes it easier for people to understand what is required of them to book the space and um, to know when they could use it. Thank you. Any other questions? Being none, all in favor of approving a policy KF for the second reading. Six plus one. All right. So moved. And we'll leave that with Kelly Murphy. 10.7. 10.7 is, um, oops, I just clicked the wrong one, sorry. Um, it's, again, no changes from last week, so it's in last reading, so it essentially stays the same. This is policy KFP, and it <coughs> is basically the, um, the grid that shows what spaces are available for rent, the dates are available, the size, and if there's a fee or not, and so along with policy KF. The will of the board. Move, move to approve. Move to approve. Second. Thank you, Jody. Any questions? 
Did we or did we not remove the site supervisor piece? Nope. The, which which? What do you mean? Part. Remove it. On page three, right where it says site supervisor, where there's a um, strikeout. Last time, when we discussed it, there was some discussion in whether or not you were going to leave that piece in the. The only part we were yeah. we were taking out was the 99. <laughs> person event. Um, there could be a crowd of 10 that would need a site supervisor just as much as a crowd of 100. Thank you for that clarification. Yes, that was that was the only change from the previous uh, policy. Any other questions? Being none, all in favor of approving policy KP, I'm sorry, KF-P 6 plus 1. So moved. Next, we have a second reading, 10.8 of the school calendar. And I will turn that over. Right. Uh, it is, it is uh, very directly a second reading of the calendar that was presented for first reading. And um, we, um, that's been vetted uh, through the school leaders and uh, basically would uh, request the board's approval on this. The will of the board this evening? Move approval. Second. Second, okay. Jackie? I've had no calls in, on this. Uh, I just wonder if anyone else has. I um, have not received any calls, but I do know that there are some individuals in the audience wishing to speak. So oh, okay. If anybody else has a comment before I go? No? Okay. Then I would ask, I believe we have Heather Markham, if you'd like to step up to the podium. Welcome. And welcome. Thank Heather, you. pull that microphone right down so that we can hear you. There you go. That's good. That'll work. Stand on my tiptoes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my name is Heather Markham. My address is 12 Laurel Ridge Road. I live in Scarborough, and I go to the Scarborough Middle School. Um, I'm in seventh grade. Um, so this is what I have to say. When early releases on Fridays were changed to late start days on Wednesdays, I noticed that many people were opposed to the change. So I decided to start a petition in an effort to change it back. When I began circulating one last fall, the result was outstanding. In the course of a few months, I acquired a total of over 530 signatures. Nearly everyone that I asked, both parents and students, supported early releases on Fridays, and those who opposed to them were few and far between. For the working parent, it can be very difficult to get out of meetings and other commitments on a Wednesday morning. Leaving early on a Friday afternoon is much easier and more understandable. In the, cl in the classroom on a Friday afternoon, students are much less attentive than they are on a Wednesday morning and therefore would learn more if late start days on Wednesdays were changed to early releases on Fridays. I speak for the people of Scarborough who are burdened by the challenges late start days pose. When making a decision that affects an entire town, you should go by what will be best for the majority. This is what the majority wants. Thank you so much for your time, and I really hope that you will consider changing late start days to early releases on Friday. Thank you very much, Heather. Thank you. We appreciate you coming and speaking before us. You did a very nice job. Yes. My name is Michelle Markham. I live at 12 Laurel Ridge Road in Scarborough. And um, I have a few additional comments on that. Originally, when the school calendar changed to late start from early release, I did attend one of the school board meetings at that time to question why there was such a change. And at that time, I was told it was necessary for the teachers to have a similar schedule as other school districts so that they could have training sessions together. So I did a little research, and I found that the majority of the neighboring schools have early release to include the schools of Portland, South Portland, Falmouth, RSU 23, which includes Old Orchard Beach, Saco, and Dayton, MSAD 51, which is Cumberland and North Yarmouth, Cape Elizabeth, Gorham, and RSU 14, which is Wyndham and Raymond. I feel that the schedule should accommodate the best interest of the majority of the students, a good learning environment should be the priority. I feel the students are best prepared to learn in the morning and stay on their schedules, 
and make the best use of their time if they have an early release rather than a late start. I'd like to thank you all very much for listening and for all of your community service and for your dedication to the Scarborough Schools. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we can't not let you talk. I, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I, I too would very much enjoy a a, uh, a a a early release on Friday for many 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 reasons. Um, but I do look at the at the flip side of things. I, I uh, as I said when we initially talked about changing this earlier, um, some some of the concerns were safety related in terms of kids getting out too early uh, and not being supervised in the afternoon. And I know from my perspective, and I'm speaking just solely from mine as a parent, having kids in high school and middle school, both boys, they will sleep in until the nth possible minute, um, and they do tend to be a little groggy in the morning. Um, so um, I, I don't know what the studies say or what the, what the, the, the studies show about learning environments for morning versus afternoon, but um, I think the important thing to really remember is this is really for the, the teacher's instructional benefit. Um, it's, and, I, and I can understand how cumbersome it might be for, for them to try and cram in a day and then try and turn around and do some learnings on their own um, and try and get that, that training and that, that um, work, teamwork in uh, at, at the end of the day, especially on a Friday when I'm sure like everybody else they're looking at, at moving on to the start of the weekend. So. Um, it, I, I think it's very important for us, long and the short, is, is the, the, um, the needs of the function of it instead of the, the ease or the convenience of it is, is probably some of the things that we, we should be considering. Oh, Jane, sorry. Go ahead. No, I just wanted to uh, ask if we had any any feedback from the the employees? Yes, the feedback is, is very positive. Thank you. It, and um, and again, I, I don't know uh, who had uh, provided information that it was to coordinate. Um, I think that the coordination of calendar is actually a state requirement that we and um, Mrs. Sizemore knows more about this than I do. But we need to ensure that um, all schools that are sending to the Voke, same Vogue Center need to um, have no more than five different days that are different in the calendar. Um, it, it's the going to um, a late start was not intended to coordinate uh, with other districts. It was really intended to give teachers um, an opportunity to come to their workplace and do and, and focus and get started on their own learning without the distractions of having to have 15 emails to answer at the end of the day and so on. Um, so it was really to take that time, one time a month, specifically supporting our professional learning team uh, uh, initiative, and that has been extraordinarily productive and, and very, very positive. Um, again, the board is invited on May 23rd to the presentation of the, is it the 23rd, Joanne? Yes. May 23rd to the presentation of the professional learning teams. It's really, the work that they're doing is extraordinary. And um, in some instances, some of the districts that you mentioned, for example, I'll just throw out there, AD 51, I, whether it's late start or early release, um, they basically have a, a broken up day every single week. So every single Wednesday is affected. And I would also suggest to you that I don't know of any other school district that, uh, other than Scarborough who has ever really had Friday as a, a day where it was early release. Um, just one other thing too, as far as uh, late starts go as opposed to early release, there is less disruption in the school day. It can run as more normally as a regular school day when there's late starts rather than early release. So that's another another chip in favor of um, the late starts. And we understand that, that some parents have inconvenience yes. with it, but there's also parents on the flip side that can't do the early release on any day of the week. So it's, it's a tough situation, but the professional learning teams, um, it's been mentioned, this stuff is incredible. And the, the development of the teaching skills are just a huge benefit to students across the district. And, 
um, what we saw last year at that expo was cool. It was like a teacher science fair. I mean, just the stuff that they worked on all year, it's incredible, the amount of work that went into it. And it was because of the PLT time. I think and I just time. would like to comment that having uh, been as a, a principal for uh, a long time at the middle school and early release was really a distraction because, and I also felt that it was unsafe for our kids because they would get out of school unsupervised for two to three hours and then were hanging around in town to come back for a practice. And uh, because parents couldn't get out of work to supervise them, but they would have a practice after school or a club or a play practice. And a lot of times the teachers were trying to work, trying to see where the students were going to make sure it was going to be in a safe place, and they missed out on their professional development during that time. So I think it's more concentrated and more meaningful having it for the staff in the morning at that time. Did, did Jane and Jackie send you here? Yeah, um, Jane? I, you know, I was going to, I, I was starting listening to, you know, some of the pros, and uh, I just wondering if um, I, I have been to a couple of meetings that have this brought up, and even though personally, actually, I like the early, uh, uh, you know, I like the late start because my son is, you know, gets to sleep late, you know, once in a while. Um, but I can see, you know, all these parents that have this, you know, I don't work outside the house, so I don't cannot relate to your difficulty, but I can understand that, you know, we have seen other parents coming up. So is there something that we can, you know, spend a little bit of time more, do we, you know, we as a board or as the leadership to reconsider that? Or? Well, the, um, actually the community services has the late start package that they did this year. I have not heard that they were not going to offer it next year. Mm -hmm. There are a slotted or a particular number of slots available for parents to register their students for the late start days. Mm -hmm. And I believe that they said it was successful. I think they had yes, a yes. full house yes. yep. every or, uh, every late start. So I do know that they were going to plan on offering that if it worked out. And According to Ms. Sizemore now, she's telling me that it worked out. So there might be other so solutions um, parents are not aware of and that you um, can explore. So I hope everybody can find you know, the best outcome and uh, make it work. So. Any other? Oh, I just I've got okay. two, three, I've got, okay. So would you like the last word? Whatever, chair, chairpersons. No, I just would like to say that uh, my tenure on the board, during my tenure on the board, I have seen many variations on the theme. Uh, the least acceptable for everybody seems to have been days, full days, uh, peppered throughout the school year. Uh, and we've done, as I say, variations on the theme. It appears to me that over the last two years, this has been the one that has seemed to have worked the best. Uh, that's just from my perspective. Uh, I too would, if I was in your shoes, would like Friday afternoons off. <laughs> I don't blame you a bit, but I can tell you having been a teacher that when you get to noontime on Friday, uh, you've worked hard. The teachers work hard, believe it or not. I appreciate the fact that you have done this work. And I want you to speak with this young lady before you leave. And when you get to the high school, I want to see you sitting in that seat. <laughs> because you can affect some change, by golly. Right? Yeah, absolutely. You get to say it right out every time. So, But she hasn't said anything about the schedule. Yeah, I was um I was just about to say I actually agree. I do like the late start better. Um from personal perspective, I <laughs> do feel like on a Friday afternoon I am just checked out and really honestly not paying that much attention and I'm not getting as much as I would from a Wednesday morning class when yes, I'm tired when I wake up at 6:30 in the morning, but after that 
you know, like you get up, you eat breakfast, and by the time you're at school, you're awake enough to learn and pay attention and know what is happening. And um, so kind of from that point of view, the student is um, better to have the early release on a Friday than to start late on a Wednesday. I, I just wanted to, to echo Ms. Perry's comments. Um, I, I know, Heather, it's, it takes a lot of courage to get up and do what you did, and, and, and trust me, it doesn't go unnoticed, mm -hmm. and, and I did want to acknowledge you for that. And uh, I, too, hope you find your way to that table uh, in, in a few years, because if you're showing this kind of courage now, there will be a lot of good things that will come in the future. So thank you for coming and sharing your thoughts. That was very, that was very good. Dr. Uh, same thing, really. I, I just think that you provided such a nice example of respectfully presenting your opinion and really requesting consideration of the board, and uh, you did a good job of that. So continue to uh, use, use that voice in a respectful way. It doesn't mean that you always get what you want, but um, it, it's, uh, it's important to advocate and to do that in the, in the way that you modeled tonight, which was very, and so did your mom, by the way, <laughs> uh, was very, very respectful, so thank you for that. You're, we're and if, if you want student issues brought to the board, we have two student reps. You can be in touch with them. All right. <coughs> Any other comments, questions, clarifications? Seeing none, all in favor of approval of the calendar's second reading as presented. Six. And all not in favor of approval of that? Would that be one? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> six, six for yay and one for nay. So, so moved then. Uh, thank you very much. All right. And we have appointments. Thank you. Lost my place. I'll turn it over to you then. Um, there is uh, both in um, 10.9.1 and 10.9.2 um, athletic appointments. Uh, the, uh, 9.1 is high school, and then the addendum is 9.2, which is the middle school, and I would encourage the board to move um, approval on that. Move appointment of Lance Johnson as the strength and conditioning coach at the high school for winter spring 2013-14. Uh, and Sean Fagan, uh, Winter Spring Assistant Wrestling Coach at the Middle School. I have a second. Second. Any questions, comments? Seeing none, all in favor of approval as presented of the appointments for winter and spring 2013-14. Six plus one. So moved. Now we have our committee reports this evening. Would like to, uh, shall I start down by you, down? Uh, Jackie? Well, as you know, we have finished two contracts, the second one being the professional staff contract that we approved this evening. And we will be starting negotiations with the bus drivers and the support staff. Uh, as far as Maine School, School Boards Association is concerned, as you heard, we will be having a meeting at the State House to show support for Maine School Boards uh, on the 24th of this month. And uh, we have a meeting, the, the, excuse me, <coughs> the Board of Directors will meet next Saturday. And hung off the press before I came that the uh, legislature has approved the moratorium on the virtual school piece, uh, and there is uh, speculation that the governor may veto that, and there is not certainty that there are enough votes to override the veto. What it would mean uh, is that everything would be put on hold, including the virtual school that was approved earlier this week, until such time as the legislature could investigate the state running a virtual charter school. So uh, we'll have to hold our breath and see how that progresses. I was just hot off the press told that it had been vetoed by the yeah, governor. I heard it on NPR on the way here. 
Really? That was quick. Yeah. Well, we're not talking about bonds. All right. <laughs> well, you know, I don't carry one of those phones, so. <laughs> All right. Um, and that's okay. it for you, Jackie? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And then Jane. Thank you. And uh, for the long range facility planning, we had a meeting with Harriman on February the 11th, and they presented the first part of the um, the project research they have done. They updated our floor plans and side plans. Uh, they made a present our student projections for the next few years and so how we uh, look at how the space is being all allocated and uh, you know look at our heating cost, what's the energy utility cost on our schools and uh, what's the replacement value for the buildings. So those are very good information and they, we did review the capital improvement plan for the past four years and we the next step for them to do is basically look at the problem areas in our school in, in terms of heating and, uh, and uh, see how we can improve efficiency and uh, greening our school and other things they gave us um, basically uh, suggesting what we can do for the CIP capital improvement plan for the next few years. So, thank you. On behalf of Donna, who forwarded me some information, again, Donna's not here this evening. So um, she is giving an update on the communications committee. Uh, currently, she ha they have done two meetings in the community, and I believe Kelly was at one with Donna, and I think Jane and Kelly and Donna. Uh, Kiwanis and the WOW seniors um, met together, and uh, they did a PowerPoint uh, presentation and discussing what's going on in the schools and um, what's upcoming. So there's another meeting that's set up for Piper Shores on March 12th, and I believe that's <coughs> until so, and I will be attending, and I think Kelly will as well. Um, Pardon me, but they did an excellent job with their presentation at, at the Kiwanis meeting. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I believe that's been passed along to Donna already, but yes. I'll make sure she knows. Um, and then the other thing is, is that um, she's also having conversations with the Historic Society, the Friends of the Library, and the Lions Club. So she's out there working the um, different groups so that she can get meetings set up so that we can go and present ourselves. Do you have anything to add to that? Well, I just wanted to mention that our um, official Board of Education Facebook page is now live, so everyone should go like it to get um, information about meetings and the budget schedule as it comes up and um, just neat things that are happening in the school department. Thank you very much. All right, and then um, Donna would also be giving an update on the evaluation development team. She said the committee recently took a second look at the iObservation data management system for observations and evaluations of professional staff. Representatives from Bonnie Eagle did an excellent job demonstrating how they have been using this program in their schools this year. This was very informative to the teachers and administrators who attended. Our involved educators are making excellent progress on the written plan that will need to be submitted to the state this summer for approval. This is a huge piece of work. We will be in compliance with the law once we receive approval and we will begin implementation with a group of teachers as a pilot this coming fall. That was Donna's report. And I already gave her a report, so I'm going to kill it. Okay, so the policy committee, we are still trying to meet every other Tuesday and working our way through the policy manual. I had the opportunity to meet with the wellness committee to discuss our wellness policy. Um, we have a great group, it's a wide array of um, health teachers, guidance, phys ed. Um, other faculty and staff, um, the director of school nutrition, and we also there's also a member from um, the Let's Go program, so she's there also giving tips about policies and comparing to other districts. So we're working on the wellness policy and hope to have something within the next month or so to present. Thank you. Are you not sure? All right, there we go. Uh, the budget's starting to heat up, obviously, or I shouldn't say heat up, pick up, excuse me. We won't use heat up quite yet. It's picking up. Um, we've, um, on February 20th, we had our first joint committee meetings with the town council and the school board finance committee um, to basically the, 
cursory discussions were aligning expectations and discussing about what the path forward is going to be and, and, and talking about general philosophies at first. Um, we're, we're still in the developmental process, so we didn't have any really hard numbers to discuss. Um, we had our finance meeting before this meeting today and discussed the town audit and the school board audit that Mac page uh, their annual audit of our of our financials and uh, that looked um, <coughs> fairly standard fairly normal but there is a meeting on March 19th with Mac page between us and the uh, town council to review those findings so but um, not expecting anything unusual to come out of those audits Jackie. Wentworth has had uh, we think we, we have a big announcement coming down about trees. And Andy Cusack, some of you know, owns Beach Ridge Speedway. And he contacted me a couple of weeks ago that NASCAR has a program of donating trees to schools to, you know, to offset of missions and everything. And he wondered if we might be interested especially in light of building a new school. And I said, absolutely. And uh, Dan Cecil, our architect, has been in touch with Andy. It seems as though it will be an enormous donation. Uh, we don't know all of the details, and uh, Dan is in the process of setting up a meeting with uh, <laughs> the steering committee of the building committee and with Andy and to get the details and to see how we're going to proceed. We've invited Dan Bacon, who's the town planner, to be a part of the group. But uh, this is not seedlings. These are, as, as Andy says, mature trees. So uh, we're talking 50, 60, 70 Trees. I mean, an enormous donation if we can work out all the details. So everybody, keep your fingers crossed, and and we'll have more details coming down the pike, or coming around the oval. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> around the Thank you. All right. Anything else? I have no other agenda items this evening other than 12.0, which is adjournment. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> Don't all jump at once. All in favor of adjournment. We have six plus one. Meeting adjourned.